hardest things to talk about in life is death. Now some people are not only talking about it, they're planning ways to make sure their passing conserves energy and protects the planet. Energy Now Chief Correspondent Tyler Suters has more on how people are taking charge of what they can do even after they die. This year, almost a million Americans will enter a machine like this. A crematory. How uh, hot is it in there? Right now, it's about 1,680 degrees, roughly. The Anderson McQueen Funeral Home in Florida handles about 1,700 cremations each year. And that takes a lot of energy, enough to power about 200 homes for an entire year. Our monthly gas bill, just to give you an idea, is about $6,000 a month. All those flames also release carbon dioxide, but now clients here can choose to cap that carbon. When something takes over a disease or an illness, mm -hmm. you just don't really know how long mm -hmm. it's going to take. Until his father, Pete, passed away this fall, Dave Cattare had never considered the environmental costs of cremation. My approach was hands off. I don't want to deal with uncomfortable subjects. But Dave found a comforting option a more environmentally sensitive means of memorializing his father. One of the options was the method of cremation. You know, you flame or water, basically. Bio-cremation, brand new to the United States. In fact, Anderson McQueen has the first commercial bio-cremation machine in the entire world. The process is underway behind us right now. The process is operating right now, yes, sir. How long will it take? It takes typically about three hours, um, so very similar to the traditional, traditional flame cremation. A cremation with no flames and fewer carbon emissions. We still get the body to ash, but we reduce it chemically using a process called, genetically, alkaline hydrolysis. Sandy Sullivan runs the Scottish company that designed a machine called the Resumator to streamline the decomposition process. We're using the same chemistry as is used by nature um, and speeding that up. The body is immersed in a solution of about 5% potassium hydroxide and 95% water. That's heated to 350 degrees, speeding up the chemical reaction that decomposes the body. Sullivan says the entire process uses just 15% of the energy of a flame cremation, with just a quarter of the emissions. According to the company that sells the technology, a flame cremation emits about 400 pounds more carbon dioxide than a bio-cremation. So if one million people chose bio over traditional cremations, that would be like taking 36,000 cars off the road for a year. A selling point that McQueen says is resonating with his clients. Well, I think it's going to become very big, uh, primarily for a couple of reasons. One is, uh, again, the environmental concerns that many families have. More and more uh, people are recognizing More and more this. people want to reduce that carbon footprint that they leave behind. Which is why there are now more and more environmentally conscious memorials. Each of these cement structures being dropped into the Chesapeake Bay will not only become a marine reef, but a green burial. Three days before the services at sea. Right now we're mixing the remains into the concrete. Cremated remains, stirred by loved ones into a concrete mix. That mix will be placed into a reef ball, creating a new habitat for marine life, like shellfish. George Frankel started Eternal Reefs 11 years ago. We'll get growth on these within six weeks. We'll get measurable growth within two months, and we will really have meaningful shellfish population out here within a year. He says there are now more than 700,000 reef balls carrying created remains off the coasts of almost 70 countries. Bye, Mom. But maybe the most environmentally helpful burials involve nothing more than the ground. That's the premise at this green cemetery in Central Florida. The Prairie Creek Conservation Cemetery is, um, includes 78 acres. Freddie Johnson is executive director at Prairie Creek. The rules here, no embalmed bodies and occasionally no caskets. Johnson says that way the dead give back to the environment by returning their nutrients to nature. Everything physical is always recycled one way or the other. And everything here from grave digging to casket lowering is done by hand. Mother Nature does a very, very perfect job of uh, taking care 
of the recycling of life, which is a beautiful thing to me. Nature may be perfect at recycling, but maybe not as fast as human technology. As this machine does in roughly three hours what Mother Nature does in months or years. Those people who want to express their environmental awareness and concerns in a very positive way on their exit from this life, this allows them to do that. So Pete Cadere became a pioneer. He was kind of an adventurous soul. In October, Pete was just the second person in America to have their remains resumated. A trail his son Dave is now considering as well when it's his time. Either alternative is not so hot, you know, <laughs> you know? But, um, but this seems to be the preferable, in my opinion, you know, uh, for many good reasons. In Florida, Tyler Suters, Energy Now. Not to be maudlin, but we thought you might be wondering how much green burials cost. Well, the Anderson McQueen Funeral Home charges $550 for a flame cremation, $650 for the bio cremation. That's within an overall funeral service package that costs as much as $6,500. For a burial at sea, the Eternal Reefs price tag ranges from three to $7,000, and a green burial at Prairie Creek Conservation Cemetery costs $2,000, most of which goes toward restoring the land.